To do Emily Ocker's circular cast on, start with your yarn like this with the tail down here and make a loop like this. Just like that. And you'll want to leave a longer tail. I'm just keeping it short so you can see the end of it. Um, so just make a loop like that. Tail crosses in front. Now tension the yarn in your left hand like this. I know if you're a continental knitter this might be weird, but this is like crochet, so you'll be using your left hand. So just over, under, over, under, or at least over your pointer finger and maybe wrapped around your pinky finger or something like that. But like that. Now take a crochet hook that's about the same thickness as your yarn and hold on to the tail with your right hand so it doesn't go anywhere. Now take the crochet hook and put it into this loop you made under the working yarn and pull up a loop of the working yarn to the circle like that. Now take the crochet hook under the working yarn again and pull up another loop. This is a slip stitch and pull it through the loop on your hook. Alright, so that's your first stitch. Um, most circular projects start with maybe about eight stitches, so I'll show you again. Um, into the loop, under the working yarn, grab the working yarn, and you can see I'm like rotating the crochet hook down to catch it. I'm not trying to do it like this. Pull it through the big loop, scoot that down, under the other loop, you can pinch everything down here, and then pull just through the first loop on your hook. So that's two stitches. So I'm going to do about eight. You can see I'm using the fingers of my left hand right here to make it easier to pull that through. Let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five. So it's going to be a little awkward to hold the loop at first, but once you get the first few stitches going, it'll be no problem. Okay. And this is kind of giant yarn. Usually you won't have to cram your stitches on your hook like this. Okay, I think I've got eight. There we go. All right, so now it's time to start knitting in the round, and you can use magic loop or you can use double pointed needles, but either way, take your first needle like this and just go ahead and pass each stitch like this to the knitting needle. I'm using the end of a long circular needle here because I'm going to use magic loop. Like that, voila. And you can tell if you've done it right because if you take the tail and pull on it, it'll like zip up, which is super awesome, right? So that's what's going to happen in the middle of our circle. So now, um, just divide this for working like in magic loop. Divide these stitches in half, or you can put them onto uh, three double pointed needles if you like. You can just go to knitfreedom.com slash magic loop if you want to learn more about how to do magic loop. All right point your needle tips to the right, and I'm going to show you how to do the first couple rounds. That's the cast on, but, so now check this out, we pull the tail, zip, and we've got this beautiful round cast on, whoops, there we go, that will start the middle of the project. So if you want to get started, um, I would have this side facing you, as opposed to this side with the bumps on it, see that? Let's see, I'm going to call this the... Uh, Yeah, I want to. If this is the front. Okay, we're going to pretend that this, uh, that this is the back needle. No, no, I lied. We're going to pretend that this bottom one is the back needle. Sorry. Okay. So, and this is how you learn not to panic when you drop stitches. Tension the working yarn. There it is back there. You can leave the tail to the front, it doesn't matter. Pull out the bottom needle, like that, and fly it around, and begin to knit. Um, you can see that the stitches are twisted, so I would knit through the back loop there. Like that, that will untwist them. And I'll show you American style on the other half. So, like that. And knit all four stitches. Like that. I'm assuming you know how to do magic loop. Um, like I said, go to knitfreedom.com slash magic loop if you want a full-on tutorial. Alright, if you're knitting American style, very similar. Make sure your yarn is in the back. And still knitting this first round through the back loop. Go ahead and knit these stitches.
There, and we've got our first round of knitting. There it is. So, and you can use, let's, we can poke that back through there. You can use the tail if you want, um, when you weave it in, if you want it to look more like a circle. Oh, that looks pretty good. If it's loose at all, you can use your tail when you weave it in to, like, kind of grab whatever loose part it is and pull it through so that it looks really nice at the center of your shawl or your hat or whatever you're making. So that's the first round. I just want to give you one more tip. I would, if I were you, I would put a stitch marker at the beginning of your round, which is actually right here. I didn't finish the magic loop, but, but this is the beginning of the round. It's the first stitch, and I would actually, like, put it around the whole first stitch like that. And the reason is you're going to want to, and as you expand, as you increase and your knitting gets wider, go ahead and move this up and up and up in your knitting um, until it gets pretty wide because right now a stitch marker in the middle is not going to give you much help because you won't be able to tell which is the end because the middle is in the middle. Um, so get as close to the end as you can and then, and then keep moving it. That way you'll be able to keep track of the end of your round. The tail won't be much help to you uh, in this case. So make sure to go to knitfreedom.com if you want to see more clear, wonderful knitting videos like this. And uh, sign up for the newsletter and you'll get exclusive free ones.